from uptown, you know my sound is major. I know you like the lyrics, kid, so just do me your favor. Tell the tech to turn my dad up. This is a pack up. Hey, yo, don't back up. Because I want to dive in and swim in the mentals. Where your thoughts roam. I want to make you build my home. Therefore, you'll never be alone. But when you hear my song, sing along with the rhythm. Because I got made the fat beats that I give them. Yes, it's the ears, and I'm checking out the blonde one. Maybe I can have one. Maybe I can con one. Chill. I'm one with God, brothers. It's hard to stay straight until you're scared straight. And then you can't wait to get out. Well, welcome to the 100th Monkey Radio with Tom and Ramon. We are recording this on January 22nd of 2015. And uh, Ramon, you're getting back into the groove over there in Japan now that you're uh, done with your little jaunt across America, huh? Yeah. Um, it was so much fun. I went to Seattle. I went to see you in Centralia. Uh, Portland. I went... To a few places. Yeah. Uh, give me a second, cause I, I don't know. Yeah. Florida. Florida. New York. Um, New York and Vermont. I Vermont. Finished the trip. Nice. Yeah. Um, Vermont was. Vermont is like Portland, where they have a lot of um, not promoting alcohol, but they have a lot of microbrewery, and also um, the where I was staying, they um, he makes maple syrup. So oh, nice. I, I had a chance to get something called maple cream, which I've never heard of. So what they do is they cook the maple syrup further down, and then they make maple cream. I mean, Vermont, Canada has nothing on Vermont when it comes to maple syrup. Oh, I know, I know. Yeah, that's uh, isn't that is it Vermont that is like the maple syrup capital of the U.S.? Yeah, I it's thought, Vermont. Yeah, I, I couldn't remember if it was. Um, Oh, which state it was up there? Anyways, yeah, good stuff. Did you did you actually uh, go out and see how they tap the trees and stuff like that? Yeah, he showed me around um, the way he taps the trees and the pipes and and it's, it's so much modern technology and these huge vats where they collect all the sap and stuff like that. And what I like too is that they don't tap the same tree every year. So if they tap this tree, they leave it alone and then they tap a different one and then the next year uh, two years uh, the next year they don't tap it and the year after that they tap it so every two years they'll tap a tree so that's really nice. good so keep it sustainable and they're not doing any damage to the tree and yeah and they actually do a lot of things to protect the tree from getting um, bacteria into it or getting sick and stuff like that Right. So, um, and this place, it's called Solar. Give me a second. Solar Maple Farm, and they, what they do is they're a hundred percent off the grid as far as electricity. Uh, the the water and stuff, I'm not sure, but as far as they actually sell electricity back, nice. so they're completely sustainable, and they use um the firewood to. Uh, cook down the maple. It's it's quite an adventure. Uh, and this is in Vermont, right? Yeah, it's in Lincoln. And it's Vermont. not like it's not like uh, that's one of the sunniest spots of the country. Um, and they're what, able to to be. What I was told that solar. like what they want for perfect condition for maple is warm days like around fifty, and and very cold nights. Um, so this way it the sap rises up during the day and then seeps back down into the roots and that does like something to it. So it sounds like alchemy to me, you know? <laughs> I'm sure in um, a sense it is, isn't it? Yeah. Anyway, let me uh, get into some quick news. Um, so this is something actually I saw this morning and um, I, I saw Mel actually post this and it's Mars Curiosity Rover ancient cat statue discovery sets aliens hunter a buzz um so there's you know there's a lot of things i've been seeing on mars like this last few years and there's also you know recently nasa came out and was saying that there definitely is life out there um but they have no proof of it yet and things like that so and then uh nbc news made a little thing they still had the little giggle factor um but it's actually pretty good to to see it's um air force oh that's right 
the um, project, um, not grudge, project blue book has been released by the Air Force. Did you hear about this time? I did not. Yeah, they finally, after everybody else released their version, they finally released it. So, I mean, there was a little giggle factor from NBC about it, and they made it sound like, oh, conspiracy theorists is going to give them so much fuel, and it's like, okay. So, was do you know, was there any anything more substantial that came out of that? No, there's no smoking gun um, in in the files. Um, well, I haven't gone over the files, but according to the news, there's no smoking gun. Um, it's a lot of because from what I heard was that he wasn't let on. Uh, what's his name again? Um, the Root guy. Belt. Who, no, it wasn't Root Belt. Uh, the guy who headed um, uh, Project Blue Book. Anyway, he supposedly he wasn't let on to the really good cases. Those were kept like, you know, crash UFOs and things like that. He wasn't let to those kind of cases. But he was uh, given the swamp gas in the Illinois it, forest, right? Exactly. Yeah. That kind of stuff. Um which he actually regretted uh even mentioning that. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, um so the you know, the rover has been seeing a lot of things like lights, you know, blinking lights. And they were trying to say that it was like cosmic rays. But then you got clips of this quote unquote cosmic ray or solar, uh, the sun shine like moving. And it looked more like it was, um, following the, the rover. Uh, Jaime Melsan does a, a great thing on it. Um, that guy is just the best. Um, we need to try and get him on the show because he's doing things I wish somebody would do in the states. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and he's popular down there. Of course, he's popular because any Mexican, you just stop any Mexican on the street, and if he hasn't been too Americanized there, it's not a big deal to them. It's like, right. oh yeah, right. You know, it's kind of like, oh yeah, I seen a tree before. <laughs> right, right, yeah. What's a big deal? But anyway, we got one of our favorite guests. Um, She's been on the show more times than I can count. I'm sure if I went and counted, um, but I'm not going to. But we love having her on. Her energy is so high, and it's just so much fun to have her on the show. So We've got Mono the Delfino back with us. And, uh, (laughs) Uh, you know, along with working on individuals to help them transform their transform their lives, Mona has taught classes entitled uh, Truth or Consequences of the Human Body. The truth is in you and has done several health fairs and expos, including vibrational name reading on the big island of Hawaii from depth to peace in Eugene, Oregon, and is currently uh, doing talks entitled Intuition and Health. I don't know if that if this is old. Uh, and being Zen in 2010 and beyond in Bend, Oregon, along with many other and more classes on true health. Uh, her background in nursing and neurology has given more insight into her take on there is no diagnosis that pertains to a category in our body. They are only conditions from energy blockages and transparent memories. That's that that that's one we're definitely gonna have to talk about a little bit this evening. Also, uh, she's just done amazing work, and she's always out there doing something. Uh, she's got a cruise. You still have a cruise coming up, or don't you? Here uh, next uh, couple months, Mona. Well, that's something we're gonna talk about. Ah, um, okay. Yeah. I'll tell you about that in a minute. <laughs> and she's going to be uh, she's going to be releasing uh, her book into uh, Audible.com, the the sacred language of the human body, and uh, she's got some other stuff in the works too. Uh, another book out there, the Splendor of Surrender, that uh, uh, hopefully we can get out of her in the near future. So welcome back to the 100th Monkey, uh, Mona. I really destroyed that bio. And you know what, young lady? Last time we had you on, we talked about that bio. Yes, we did. We certainly <laughs> did. And, and lots has happened between now and that bio. <laughs> oh, I know, I know. And as I was trying to uh, pick a little bit of new material out of there, and I was like, oh, geez, come on. 
Hi. And then I messed it all up. I was like, oh, geez, no, that's old. <laughs> <laughs> it's old news, baby. But, you know, it's still it's still potent. There's a lot of that still going on. And right. still a lot of the classes and the information that you read. Some of that is still really uh, pretty pertinent to today, you know. And looking back on everything, it's still like, wow, it's kind of neat that you said that. From depth to peace, that's a really cool class. <laughs> that one was really fun. But, no, I've, I've changed a lot of that uh, from the front part of the website, you know, when you go under that www.sacredreconnections.com, the very front page has all of the new happenings, and that that's where all the information is that's going on right now, plus there's a calendar that, you know, says what I'm doing and where I'm going, um, but, you know, it's just been so interesting, and you guys, 2014 to where we are today, wow, oh, wow. Man. We're going to talk about that a little bit um, because most of the majority of the people that I'm working on right now are experiencing, you know, a really, really big shifting since even December 31st. You know, there's been a lot of changes happening just in this month alone already. And so, and, you know, when I talk about changes, I'm talking about uh, internal feelings that people are getting. And, of course, you know me, I always talk about the inside of the soul, inside of the spirit, um, because this is where the changes have to begin, right, in order to, you know, put them out there uh, for other people to see and experience uh, through your example. And so a lot of what's going on today is that uh, um, the solar flares are still pertinent. They are uh, happening right now. The reason I'm bringing that up first is because that, I feel, is the number one reason why we are shifting so quickly. Um, I really feel it. I went back to Cancun, let's see, back in um, December 3rd through December 8th. I went with the Institute of Heart Math uh, Global Coherence Initiative. Are you guys familiar with Howard Martin and Dr. Roland McCready? I, I, I'm familiar with the Heart Math Institute, but not with those two in particular. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, they're the, Greg Braden is the one I'm familiar with. Oh, yeah. Well, see, Greg went and got a certification uh, with them last year. And because he loves heart math as, as much as I do, actually, they're really, really good people. And they um, they should be out there more often. They need to be on more radio shows and stuff because they have the information. Dr. Roland McCready is actually the, uh, the scientist researcher, the director of research for the Global Coherence Initiative. And that man is absolutely brilliant. He is... Um, He's kind, he's, he's friendly, and he's got all this information. He shares it with NASA. What they do is they've got machines that are like $23,000 a piece. They're just, uh, and, and you know, they're a nonprofit. So everything that they've done for the last 24 years is a nonprofit. And so they have built their foundation on how the heart works and how it's measured. And so everything for the last 24 years has been measured through heart math, through some of these ways of looking at like how the machines work and stuff like that. They've got four of them in Boulder Creek, California. Uh, they've got, I think, 30 acres of, of land over in the area of Boulder Creek. I'm going to go down there in March. I've got to check all this out, of course, you know. Of but uh, but it was really nice. fun because down in December, uh, you asked about the cruise. Okay, well, <laughs> all right. Here we go. All right. So August of last year, uh, I made a decision that the cruise wasn't coming together. Okay. And I had asked, oh, three or four big names to come with me. Uh, I asked Okta to be the, uh, Okta is the Yucatan shaman. And I asked him if he would be so kind as to be the, the shaman to to help us to uh, bring in the new world for December 15th, you know, through um, through the Jaguar Temple in Belize. And so that was really the reason why I wanted to go, was to bring enough people there to initiate where it's two or more gathered. I wanted enough people there to initiate the shift over um, through going back to the Yucatan. Because Spirit told me that this is really an important adventure. And any time you go back to the Yucatan, during the times that we're going through now, uh, it's actually, it's, it's almost like a, a connection, but yet it's a shift over. And so to explain that a little bit better, um, 
when I when I decided not to do the cruise, it hurt me because I thought, you know, I put so much into this and I had a website and everything. But uh, long story short, it just wasn't coming together the way I had wanted it to. So I went online one day. I just said, OK, forget it. You know, screw it. I'm, I'm going to I'm going to check other things out and see what else we can do, because I could feel the importance of going to the Yucatan. Um, I went ahead and I looked on uh, my emails that day. And wouldn't you know, there's the Institute of Heart Math pops right up hey we're going to Cancun Mexico and we're going to do a retreat down there and both Roland McCready and Howard Martin are going to be there and you know and and da, da, da. and I've known about these guys for a long time and so I just realized well they they're doing it for me I don't have to do all the work they've got it going already so I invited uh people from Carson City Portland and all the west coast I invited anybody that wanted to come uh that I came in contact with if they wanted to go and I ended up with eight women uh, who decided to go ahead and pay the money and come on down, even though they didn't know what heart math really was. They just trusted that I knew what I was talking nice. about. Nice. So anyway, we get down there. It was phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. We went on the full moon, the last full moon, yeah. December 6th, 2014. I got the ladies together, and we went to Tulum. And Tulum is the Mayan city that's actually right on the beach over there in Cancun. And it is like one of the last Mayan cities that, that you know, uh, still exists. It's just that it's all ruins. But you, when you walk through it, Oh, God, I think the only way I could say it is I felt like I had come home. Hmm. And I'd oh. never been there before. And I felt like this was the place where I was supposed to go and do this ceremony. Anyway, I felt as though this is where the turnover was. So, so long story short, we actually did a goddess ceremony. We did something called the goddess ceremony. It was one that I had been instructed to by spirit to do. As you know, I do a lot of land healings and things like that. Only when I'm instructed, I don't, I don't do it unless I'm asked. And, uh, and I was definitely asked and this came in my path and we did it. So it was amazing. It was just wild. The pictures we got from that were orbs everywhere, uh, rainbow orbs for that matter. Uh, wow. the, the, the sun was raising in this, it, I mean, just the rays of the sun were coming out of a cloud that looked like a champagne glass that was mm. coming up around us. I've got pictures of all this stuff. It was amazing. But anyway, the bottom line is that what we did is we did a ceremony to help transfer the energy uh, from 500 years ago to where we are in coming into 2015 because something deep within me knew that I had been there before and that I had come back this time to help reorganize or or shift within myself um, all of the energies that had been from before, even in that area, into something br new and bright for all of us in the world. And so, and when I say goddess, I am not talking women. Um, when I say goddess, I am talking about the qualities that are based in that, of course, you know, which is the nurturing, the compassion, the more open, expanded feelings that we get right now in what we're experiencing in 2015. Everything is getting larger. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but yeah, already in this year, this is going to be a year of 2015. It's going to be four times greater than 2014. Hmm. And so, uh, real quick, um, before we uh, you get too far away, uh, why 500 years? 500 years was the last time that, see, in, in Tulum, that's where they would, the Mayans would uh, get together and make their decisions. And this is where the Puma was. This is where, you know, the uh, the Jaguar. This is where the, they had an apothecary. They had the way that they did their thing. This is, a, this is 500 years of the way that, uh, life has been established, especially down in that area with the Mayans and how they, how they ran their temples, how they ran their cities. And so it was male dominated. And so in this particular time, it was almost like I might have been one of them because the feeling that I had when I got there is falling to the ground. And I couldn't even, I can't even explain it. It was almost like when you know that you know that you've come home or you feel like life has no years at all you know like like this is something that you've done and you knew you were there that was the feeling i got and so it was like okay so we're just basically reestablishing. um i was supposed to get a dress i kept hearing spirit tell me get a dress and i thought okay this sounds crazy 
I don't get this. Why am I doing this? Well, I couldn't find one. I looked for four or five days. I couldn't find a dress. I said, I can't do it. I can't find anything for a ceremony. And, uh, and it wasn't until we got to Tulum, which I had never been to before in this lifetime, where there was a marketplace out in front. And wouldn't you know, there was the dress I was looking for. It was completely white with a golden Mayan calendar uh, on the very front of the dress. And it was absolutely perfect for the ceremony. And so, uh, you know, I mean, it was stuff like that. I, I have to say it was almost like those points of magic, which you don't really know uh, are going to happen. They all come together and it becomes um, it becomes spontaneous. But you just have to show up. Right. And that's how this worked. And so anyway, uh, this was what happened. We ended up going over there and uh, having an incredible incredible ceremony every single person that went has their lives have changed um they all have have changed all the women have opened up their hearts they feel different today than they did uh six months ago um and i have been noticing from my clients alone the changeover from a lot of the people i'm working on everybody is changing and they're starting to feel the intensities on some level very strong and some people are blowing the doors open Mm. And so everyone has a different way of doing it. And this is the year. And I'm really glad you got me on the show tonight because I do want to, you know, share some of this stuff with you guys. Um, it's big. It's um, it's like throwing a rock in the pond. Remember I told you that I was John J. Harper's uh, business partner? Mm -hmm. Right, um, right. Yeah. 2010 before he passed. Okay, well, one of the things he'd said was in 2006, it was like somebody threw a rock in a pond. And he said, it's like when uh, the, it, this is uh, very big because it has to do with the galactic center, has to do with the ecliptic arm and the Milky Way that is collapsing. Uh, all of these things that he was actually teaching me as a scientist. Um, he said, it's going to be, it's going to be really strong. These changes are going to continue and they're going to build until 2017. And he said in 2017, it's going to start to calm down, but not until it rocks and rolls us for us to be able to shift. So if you look at the whole picture, this is over 26,000 years. Another cycle is occurring. We are shifting. We're changing. But this time, the solar flares are really magnifying uh, who we are this particular time around. It's, it's changing humanity. And it's happening through the particles of the sun. The ozone layer has uh, decreased to some degree. So now what's happening is we're being totally affected by it, which is a good thing, which is a good thing. It's nothing harmful. What this is is to help us to reestablish uh, coming out of the old way, the old patterns of thinking, into something completely new and different that we've never done before. It's everything Greg talks about, Greg Braden, uh, and and. Bruce Lipton at the same time because it's happening within our cells. And so see how this is actually, everything is magnifying. And so as we continue this year, this is going to be a really big year. The rock in the pond that happened in 2006 is expanding. The ripples are coming out and out and out. So we've got two more layers of ripples that are 2015 and 2016. In that particular time, the cycle that we're in, it's going to get much larger. So it's, the word is big. We're just, we're just getting bigger within ourselves. We're coming into our soul. And and that's why as within so without it's really getting big this year. Hmm. Yeah, you you know it's funny. Uh, um, there's a couple people I've heard uh, two that I could think in particular where they were saying that you know they feel like after 2000 I don't know if it was 17 or 18 that they no longer have to do this kind of work because everybody either everybody would like get it mm -hmm. would they'll know it and this kind of work won't really be needed anymore. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you can tell we're kind of coming into that time where uh, we want to enjoy life. You know, we want to ease up. We want to be simpler. I, I It's funny, Ramon, you know, I was just saying that um, a couple nights ago, uh, I had just thought how funny it was. Somebody had said something about a show that I did in 2012 with Lance White, uh, the zany mystic. And I went back and I said, hmm, I hadn't heard about that one in a long time. So I Googled myself. <laughs> and I got back to that particular show, and I did it with Mahala Gale, the astrologer who's a dear friend of mine. Well, I went back and listened to that, and I thought to myself, my goodness, my goodness. You know, we think we're amped up now. 
back in that time, that was 2012. That was July of, of 2012 uh, when I did that show. I mean, I was on fire even then where I, you know, it's like, oh, all this is coming and all this is going to happen and all this is going to be, you know, and Mahalo was telling us all the changes that were happening uh, astrologically. Well, they're still going on, but it's almost become like we just already know it's happening. So we're in the thicket of it, but it's not, even though it's big, it's, it doesn't feel, it doesn't feel, uh, I don't know how to describe it. It's not harmful. It's not, it's not so exciting anymore. It's natural. So where we're going now is into the natural states of this bigness, if you can follow me on that. It's becoming who we are. Exactly. We're yeah. becoming more expanded all the time. And we don't even know we're doing it because it's like watching your child grow when they're four years old. You know, you don't think back to when they were three and when they were little because you're still just looking at them for today. See, and so a lot of times it's not until they turn like 25 years old and you go, what happened? Right. right. <laughs> <laughs> so it's the same kind of thing that we're experiencing. We're just right in the thicket of the throes of the changes right now. So it's still happening, but I think it's better than it was before. I do think that we have come into a new time of um, reconciling uh, what we had in the past and where we're going into the moment and then into the future. I think all of us are developing something new by releasing more, and that happens a lot inside the body. So, you know, right now, I did a show last week with Lauren Gailey, and uh, we, we talked about the second brain. We were actually talking about the stomach area and how the neurotransmitters in the stomach are starting to shift as we're becoming more intuitive. As the time continues, you know, we're starting to feel, and we're getting more gut feelings. But when we talk about it, like we're doing today, and the consciousness starts to hit and we start really talking to each other about what's happening, people will go, oh, yeah, that's happening to me, too. Oh, I'm getting that, too. I've been getting that same thing. See, and so it's really, it's a good thing to talk about it in these shows because then people can relate to the changes. Mm. Uh, for me, it's not the gut because I think my gut's always been really developed. Mm -hmm. um, for me, it's more like the heart. That's where I've always had the, my issues. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And well, the that, heart heart is the biggest one. And the heart is the regulator of the rest of the body. You know, so yeah, you're absolutely right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you so, know, I, 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 ahead, I've seen people, it, it seems like there's a real definitive dividing line that's happening. Um, you know, you're, I'm seeing people that are, are uh, you know, previously in, in, you know, recent years have been kind of on the fence on and, 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 I, at least from my perspective, haven't really been a, been able to really delineate which direction they're going as far as, you know, whether they're uh, going to continue wrapped in the third dimension, their mind's completely 3D, or if they're going to open up the possibilities and start to expand. And it seems like uh, that there's a, uh, that line in between is, or, or that space in between those two factions are, is getting more definitive and it's it's widening uh so they're either what i'm saying is they're either really really going into 3d or they're really really going into uh expansion and self-discovery mm -hmm. mm -hmm. tom if you don't mind me jumping into that what i saw is um i won't mention the the name of this person and i'm sure they're listening to the show um but when I met them, they were very like very 3D person, and and their significant other was really into this, and and that's how I know him. But you know, he was a football beer kind of guy, not really into this. And then something had happened where he was kind of like he said to himself, you know, this is he was going through a situation. He said, this is done, or I need a miracle, and his guide grabbed him and just pulled him out of his body and, you know, showed him from a different perspective. And this is a person who wasn't into this whatsoever. And now when you talk to him, it's it was like six years I haven't seen him. And it's a completely different person. Like, I'm, you know, talking to him, I'm learning from him instead of the other way around. So he had like an awakening in a couple of days kind of thing where most of us, you know, it's little by little and we train and meditate. He's just like dealing, you know, know how to deal with energy and how energy works and things like that. And just find it 
absolutely mind blowing. And I think that's happening to a lot of people who were completely into this 3D and all of a sudden something happens where they're just pulled, you know, either pulled out or, or hit beyond, you know, not, not with the proverbial two by four, but the proverbial, you know, rocket ship. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Ramona, I I can agree with you there. I actually have seen that myself with a lot of the people I know here. One of the other things I've noticed is that television, uh, when they have stories on right now, they're or even Facebook, you know, they're coming out with information about what's happening to other people, and then you know, then we're kind of like we're reading that more in our social media. We're looking at it more. We're saying, oh, what would you do in that situation, or you know, that kind of thing. There's a lot of kids coming in that are. Um, uh, developing, and, and not just children, but, you know, adults too, where they're developing certain kinds of illnesses and the doctors can't, uh, they, they just can't diagnose it. Um, and, and I've been seeing that more and more on the news is that, you know, people are having some problems with this because they don't know how to get help uh, for their family members when they don't even know what's wrong with them. Mm. And so this is becoming more and more of a thing, but people are waking up and looking at it and going, wow. You know, but you can even say that in personally with uh, with yourself. Like maybe sometimes you wake up in the morning and your arm will be numb, and the next morning you wake up it'll be fine. You see, it's just it's little things like that. Or uh, people are uh, developing certain aches and pains, and I know the audience would agree with me. There's a lot of people that are developing aches and pains, or or they're not even that. They're sensations, and I'll, I'll call them sensations. Something will occur somewhere in the body. And you'll think something's wrong. The first thing we think, because we have lived in the 3D medical world, we immediately think something's the matter. But this is where we have to change the boat, because it's not that something's wrong. What's happening is we are actually, if you remember that everything is energy, and we are changing. You can't help it. This is going to happen. Okay, so as our physical bodies are shifting, we're going to develop certain aches and pains or certain types of of something's going to come up. It's either going to be emotional, mental, or physical at this point. And this is what's happening. As you start to feel these things, my suggestion is not to freak out because um, the first thing, like I said, people think something's wrong. And so they want to find something to matter. You know, God forbid we're concerned about the C word again. But a lot of times when people are having these difficulties, they don't know what's wrong. It doesn't mean that something uh isn't pressing on some part of the body. But what it does mean is that you're looking at it differently. We're not seeing it the same way. We don't have to see ourselves as a victim, you know, like we used to and say, what? oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. What's the matter? Why is my shoulder hurting so bad? I don't remember, you know, playing tennis. I didn't do anything to cause that. Well, no, but that's because what's happening is that from the universal aspect, you're being in tune with the biorhythm. And what this is, is it's an energy wave. The energy waves are coming in, and they are affecting, if you want to call it the aura, or they're affecting our electromagnetic energy. Because we all know that, you know, if you want to go into the science part and talk about the Taurus, you know, that's the energy within us that's going around the body. It's an uh, electromagnetic field, and it's like a donut shape, and it comes in and out of the heart and goes around the body. And so everything that you feel, everything that you think is included in this, and now it's magnified because we are becoming more electromagnetic as we begin to grow. So we're growing emotionally, mentally, physically, well, of course, we're going to have little aches and pains because we're growing, we're changing. And maybe the memory that you had when you were five is changing in your solar plexus and you're starting to feel different. Maybe uh, maybe you're losing weight all of a sudden because you're not carrying the load anymore. You know, maybe you had a talk with a friend and you said, yeah, that happened to me too. Yeah, I really, I'm, I'm not going to be like that anymore. I don't want to be like my mother or I don't want to be like my father. Okay, that simple recognition is going to change a, a, a cellular part of your body so wherever you were holding on to the thought that you were like your mother or father in the past is now going to be released this is how we shed the cellular memory it takes recognition but then it starts to ease up and it's happening faster for everybody but see not without the grow, growing pains the the different kinds of feelings in the body so i hope i explain that well enough for people to understand that it's not necessarily something you have to consider to be wrong you know 
Mm, yeah, there's yeah. a lot of a lot of things that we could dive into, and in what you just said there, uh, you know, one of one of the things I think is is important and uh, a stumbling block for a lot of people that that I've witnessed myself is the actual well, well, uh, for lack of a better way to describe it, misdiagnosis of what's going on, and the you know, and and losing sight of the fact that we are creators. And that when we do uh, misdiagnose or you know throw out the c word or whatever, we're we're helping to draw those sorts of things towards us. Uh, especially if there's you know if that if that uh, emotional aspect of fear is attached to it, right? Um, right. Mm-hmm. And and that's exactly right, honey. And what and really one of the biggest things now that is for 2015 that I will recommend for every single human on the face of this earth is self empowerment. It means drawing your power back. That's part of the goddess energy as well. It's, it's drawing your power back. In other words, we can't be living our lives in an expectational role, thinking that things should be this way. Or that person out there, why did they say that? It should have been like this. How come they didn't do that? It's the old way of thinking things are changing because we're putting back the power where it belongs, and that's right within ourselves, you see. And that's part of why I talked about the the solar plexus is because those gut feelings are very important to trust yourself. And that's how we begin to draw the power back within ourselves so that we don't have to take things so personally, you know, and we don't have to live based on what just service work is about. It's not just about service anymore. It's about understanding and comprehending what others are doing and not judging it. And so it doesn't mean that we have to become of service to be a good person. You know, even that was subservient from a long time ago. So it's not that at all. It's like we have to start looking at life from an independent way of seeing things you know like a like a changeover and then to be uh, compassionate but at the same time keep your power don't keep giving it out to somebody else and expecting something to come back even on a subconscious level if you do that you'll be disappointed and then and then you'll feel guilty again or you feel like you didn't do enough these are the kinds of things these are the emotional um, imbalances that have been going on in our life for a long time and this year uh, it's gonna change <laughs> it's really mm. gonna change you know something that that uh, for me personally that uh, I've grown into quite a bit this just this year just since Jan- the beginning of the year uh, is uh, the recognition of the energetic vampires and feeling and seeing and and uh, actually the recognition has been able has enabled me to uh, cut that off uh, so so. You know, when when I feel, uh, well, it's a combination of things that that is the recognition process for me. It, it's it's both of I'm using both my my well, I'm using all aspects of my being, my mind, body, and spirit, uh, to uh, recognize these things and actually uh, see them for what they are versus uh, walking around oblivious and letting you know. Uh, you know all these different uh, uh, situations just continue to drain you, and and that's part of taking back my own power, taking back my own being, and not allowing uh, others to basically walk on you, right? Right, right. It's a form of it's a form of responsibility to the self, to the capital S. You know, it, it's kind of like you're just becoming more aligned with who you are by by listening, by listening on a different level. And that is exactly what that is, honey. You gave a good example of that. You know, we don't want to have to pay attention just to what everybody tells us. We're not followers. We, we really don't have to live like that, um, which means that if we do it within ourselves, just think of what that's going to do with more more people coming into understanding self-empowerment, what that will do for our world. Hmm. See, and, and it's just going to make a huge difference, and that's what these kids are going to teach us. I feel that the children are coming in, and they don't have any, um, they're not going to have the ties that we had. They're not, they're not going to have the same way of looking at life. And the reason why is because what I see in these children already, and I'm always, you know, I'm working with these people. So, you know, I, I see what they're like in little people, and I read their energies, including my grandson. And, and these are amazing, these are amazing beings. 
Mm-hmm. And they it's not like they have to take no for an answer. It's not like they have to say yes to everything. They are independent, and they're going to do exactly what needs to be done, and that means that they are true souls. They're coming in as true souls. They don't have anything from um, uh, the, the problems that, you know, we come in as past lives and then we come back into a new life and then we're, we're learning from where we were from the past, okay? It's almost like a calendar. You just keep flipping over the page, you come back again, and then you have to go through where you left off so that you understand how to become more of a whole soul. Well, these kids coming in have already, to some degree, achieved it. And that's why a lot of them are coming in and talking about the past lives already. They're saying, oh, yeah, that I lived on that mountain when I was, you know, in the last lifetime. Did you hear about the kid that they had on the news that talked about um, finding his body that he was killed in the lifetime before and that no one found his body? And he pointed it out and he said it's buried over there. <laughs> Not only that, but he also said who killed him. Yes. And then yeah. and then yep. found and then found the I think it was the axe or shovel that he was killed with. And to make it even more amazing, the kid has a birthmark right where he was cracked on the head yes. in the last lifetime. Yes. Yes. Yeah, that's amazing stuff. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we're going to see more of that. That that's kind of the thing that's coming where we're going to actually begin to recognize, you know, and it's not going to hit the news because, you know, we're not necessarily going to hear about all that stuff. But we have to know it's happening. At least know it's happening and and get excited because the excitement is actually uh sparking uh the cells differently now. If we're excited about, you know, uh, being in these times, if, if we can even read a good book that makes us feel really good right now, you know, that makes us feel like something that we're comprehending, um, you know, even a good movie, you know how we feel. Our, our bodies get all excited and we tingle or, you know, that kind of thing. Well, that's, that's the new dendrites. Those are the, those are the new energies that are working within your body. You're starting to feel more. You're going to be more intuitive because of this kind of energy. So get excited. Find something that stimulates you. Um, because this is the time to do it. We're in the transition, but we're actually coming through it. Hmm. Yeah. You know, so, so, sorry, Tom, something else that I want to address was that uh, recently my wife had read an article and she was uh, translating it for me on the whole psychiatric thing with kids. And a lot of times what they would used to do, what well, they're still doing is, for example, if there's a troubled kid who won't stand still, blah, 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 you know, they'll take him to a psychiatrist and, and then says, well, your kid needs to be on this medicine. And then, you know, the doctor tells that to the school and the school goes, well, if you don't put your kid on the medicine, he can't come back to school. So the parents feel kind of forced to do it. And what a a doctor recently noticed, he started doing a survey and following up on a lot of these different kids that were on these drugs and started noticing that they're actually, it was making them worse, not better. And then for them to get off the drug was even worse because now they're highly addicted to the, these drugs. Right. And then he started contacting other doctors and, and you know, showing them the information. And they were like, you know what? You're right. And so my point of the story is that they're starting to realize that these drugs that we're giving to these kind of kids that we're talking about, um, they, the doctors are noticing that it's doing more damage than good. So maybe they're going to look at different alternative ways to deal with uh, what they're perceiving as the issues with the kids. Now, granted, you know, some of these kids, you know, they they may have some issues and some things that need to be addressed. But I think I think, you know, looking at them, looking at other other right. options that are are not necessarily, you know, sanctioned by Western medicine, the energetic healing I'm go- oh my god that one is so huge and I think it can do so much good for some of these kids that are that are you know, at least uh, you know have the um, uh, others perception of an issue uh, I don't know how to describe that right but you, you know what I'm talking about I hope um, yeah I, I actually I got an example oh, sorry Mona um, where there was this kid who his father had passed away, he became withdrawn, and he was having issues in school and being bullied to the point where the mother had to take him out of school. And she put him in another school uh, in a bigger city, and yet 
the same thing started happening to him. He was being bullied. So one day, he decided to start opening the door for kids. You know, just he would stay there and say good morning to every kid that walked by into high school and started doing that every day and every day. And people started appreciating him. And they just, they look forward to seeing him. And they started changing his attitude to the point where he started becoming more of a public speaker at the school. And he stopped getting bullied and he turned everything around. And he just put himself in a position where he was just going to be delightful to everybody. And I just changed um, everybody in the school. Right. And him. Yeah, so... Just an, an example of, of what Mona is talking about, the self-empowerment. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's also, if you look at the, at the bigger picture, you can see how everybody else is recognizing it. And then what does that do? That's the example for the other people. See, it just keeps going on and on, and that's energy. That's how we connect energy. If we, if we make these shifts and changes within ourselves because we're tired of the old way of doing things. And you know what? We're bored. I think we're becoming, like, there's a lot of people that I know um, that are really not liking the life that they had. And they're recognizing that it's not something that they feel um, empowered with anymore. You, you can't live your life without being excited somewhere inside of yourself. If you don't have happiness, you don't have a, some sort of a joy. And, you know, there's a lot of movies coming out like this now that are actually teaching us that, oh, yeah, it's not a great movie, you know. And so it's stuff like that. We're really starting to learn that uh, there are no boundaries. We put them on ourselves. And then we put them on our kids you know or we had them placed on us and so these changes are starting to really reflect in other people when you start changing so will somebody else because the magnitude of this year is going to bring in more energy more energy and even more energy hmm. you know the one that drives me crazy mona is that i hear from people um i'm too old to learn yeah. that one drives me nuts that's an excuse. <laughs> yeah. 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 It, it's Not a, a very good one either. Mm -hmm. I have uh, one student who, that's her mantra. Oh, boy. She'll say at least six times during class. And other other than, you know, like threatening her not to <laughs> say it anymore, she, will, she won't stop saying it. And I tell her, every time she says, don't say that. Don't say that. And how old is this? She's uh, mid seventies. Oh, but see, me and Tom are planning to live to one hundred and fifty. So that's only what the midpoint, though. <laughs> yeah, that's that's, that's the new fifty. Well, maybe she's in the middle of her midlife crisis. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Because uh, she's not a, a dumb person. Example: she's not a dumb person. She does like um, Thai carving, beautiful Thai carving. She she studies like Chinese astrology. She does all these. She does tap dancing. She's an active, wow. older woman. It's not like she's sitting at home waiting for a deaf to come look for her. Yeah. But it's just that little mantra that she won't drop. <laughs> well, that's probably your little safety net. You know, yeah. so yeah. she doesn't feel bad just in case she can't learn something. My mom was like that, you know, and my mom could never play with computers because, I mean, that was the furthest thing from her mind. She would never even touch a computer, you know, and but it was her way of saying, oh, I don't want to be here in 2000. I can't even imagine what's going to happen in the world. And by God, she died, you know, and it, it's just a lot of that. People don't if they don't want to do it, they they don't have to. But, you know, that was one of the things that was happening in Hawaii when I was there is that the the elders, the kapuna, were not able to uh, relate to the young ones because the young ones were now learning differently in the schools. And they were going in, the, the, the keiki, they call them, the children. And they would go into the schools and um, they would learn their own way. And when they started learning more technology and stuff, uh, you know, the kapuna didn't know that. They didn't know how to uh, relate to them. So there was a period of time that I know when I was there that it was really uh, almost disturbing uh, because, you know, you could usually go to your your grandma or your tutu, you know, and you could sit on her lap and play and stuff. But if you wanted her to play with your iPad with you, it's another story. <laughs> <laughs> <Right>. It could happen. <laughs> 
So, you know, it's it's a matter of coming together, you know, recognizing things. But um, I wanted to share with you a few things about what's happening today to people because this is really, um, this is big when it comes to the human body. Um, I'm, I'm really, I have to say, I'm really mastered at this because the, the body is my passion. Um, everything that happens in the body, because it's the as above, so below, I'm very much attuned to what's happening out there with the way I work. And uh, lately, the adrenal glands are something that we have to talk about. Um, it's mainly because this is the year that, like I said, it's going to be a really big year. Um, and so it, it means that the adrenal glands have got to, we've got to start living differently uh, and, and take more better care of ourselves this year um, and not push the river. Um, if we're pushing too hard or we're continually doing too much and it doesn't feel right, then, then it's going to affect us seriously physically. Uh, the adrenal glands right now are asking to change. And everyone I'm working on right now is going through these adrenal collapses and uh, adrenal shifts, uh, meaning that, and here's what I have been reading. This is so interesting. And Ramon, you're going to love this. So what's happening is the heart is being uh, affected by the adrenals. It's not just the other way around. It's not just the adrenals being affected by the heart. It is the heart is actually becoming, it's like it, it, it's having a hard time understanding the difference between what is making you go into the fight or flight versus your feelings. So this is something that is really important for this year because the way that we feel in our heart has to change so that our adrenals don't have to feel so pumped because right now we're getting tired. Uh, there's a lot of people that are feeling the fatigue right now and they're feeling that they're being thrown around like we're swashed around in a swimming pool. And, and it's very hard to, to uh, know when you should sleep or wake up, or things like that. This is what's happening because of the, mo the moon cycles are also affecting us this way. But what it's really telling us, the big, big picture of the whole thing, is to take care of yourself and to realize that you're becoming empowered within yourself through your cells. I mean, it's happening no matter what. So what we have to do is consciously talk about that because the, the adrenals are going to be, um, they're going to be maxed out and pretty soon the fatigue is going to hit a lot of people and it's not going to be able to really feel like you can make better decisions. And this year we're going to make better decisions. Okay. So that's where we're kind of having to go toward. That's the motivation, but we can't live our life the same way we did before. In other words, if you have been feeling that you have been carrying this insecurity, okay, and you haven't felt like, uh, for example, uh, if you're, if you've been feeling like you're not acceptable or that, you know, you're not liked well enough or something like that, if you continually live that way, there's a part of the adrenals that are the fight or flight that say, well, then I have to do it this way. I have to do it this way. I have to make sure that I keep my boundaries up. I have to make sure that, you know, uh, I don't get too involved in too many social activities. I can't do anything. You know, this is an example. But even that alone is going to cause the adrenals to kick in an area that's not going to feel good to the heart, you see? And so it has to be that you, sooner or later, you've got to surrender. You know, sooner or later, you got to give in to the allowance of change. Yeah. You... What, if happens I can... to the, what happens with those who don't? Then they develop problems physically. Um, they, it can develop more problems in the nervous system, in particular autoimmune dysfunction. Hmm. If, um, I can, yeah. if I can add to that, too, I kind of feel that the... Um, the ankles also play a big part of it. Like the heart, the adrenal gland, and the ankle somehow have a connection because it's like if you overwork that the adrenal gland, your ankles start to weaken oh, at, sure. at the same time. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you notice that that kind of connection. Like um, sometimes when I meditate, I can feel like the heart connecting to the adrenal gland and something to do with like the inside part of the ankle, the the I don't know what that bone is called, mm -hmm. the, the big bone on the ankle. Yeah, it's kind of like the malleolus area down at the bottom. It's actually where it is. Is it's I know where you're talking about. It's it's the inside of the ankle. That you want to know what that is emotionally. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay. Uh, the inside of the ankle means it's family related. The inside of the of the legs mean that if you're having problems on the inside of the legs or you're noticing a sensation, it's family. It means personal connections. If it's the outside of the legs, it's more social. It's outside of you. It's something else that's happening outside of you. Um, it, it can be uh, being late for work, things like that, you know, things that bother you. Well, the legs are always about direction. And so they're always taking you left as receiver and right as giver. So it's always about what direction are you going. And the ankles are related to the foundation, which is the feet. The feet are your foundation. And where you're going matters you know, and so if the legs, the knees, the knees are about support. So you're supporting yourself because you're excited about moving forward. Okay, not too fast, not too slow, but you're making the pace and you're doing a good job. Should be okay. But the ankles are in in retrospect. What it is emotionally or energetically, for that matter, is that the ankles are about flexibility in the foundation versus the direction. So you're actually putting them together through the ankles. So if you're ready to change over mentally, emotionally, or physically anywhere. You're changing jobs. You're thinking different about maybe writing a new book. You've got a whole different idea coming up in your head, or you're just bored and you want to do something new. You might feel that the nerve sensations are happening in the ankle because the ankle is saying, where do you want to go? Hmm. Mm -hmm. It's part of it. It's waking you up is what it's doing. It's waking you up. Interesting. Good stuff. So, so we're we're right at the top of the hour, and uh, we're gonna take a quick break here, and and then uh, continue this on in the the second hour. Uh, Mona, where can people get a hold of you? Uh, they can they can get a hold of me on my website uh, www.sacredreconnections.com, and that's with an S. Sacredreconnections.com. And you are still actively doing sessions and et cetera, et cetera? Yeah, I'm doing lots of talks. You can look on the calendar. I'll be at the Conscious Life Expo in uh, February 6th through the 8th with many other wonderful speakers. Um, and I will be doing healing sessions there as well as a, a speaking thing on the 8th at noon. Um, so, I, And then it goes on and on. You can look at the calendar and see where I will be. But I definitely am taking uh, people still, uh, helping people every day to come into their own soul level. Very nice. Nice. Oh, um, by the way, Tom and Mona, this show airs on my birthday. Oh, well, geez, oh. happy birthday, Ramon. Oh, Ramon. <laughs> wow. I'll be, uh, what is it, um, 61 <laughs> years closer to my 100th birthday. Oh, there oh. we go. <laughs> there we go. Uh, yeah. <laughs> or your 10th anniversary, your 29th birthday. Uh, what is uh, uh, no? What was it before we said that the twentieth anniversary of my nineteenth uh, birthday? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> okay, uh, so no, but I, I like the reverse because I'm looking forward to reaching my centennial. Plus, Tom's yeah. gonna give me an expensive gift. Yep. Yep. Well, there you go. There you go. I, I appreciate that for you. <laughs> Congratulations and happy birthday for that day coming up. <laughs> Thank uh. you. All right, guys. Okay. We'll, 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 we're going to continue on with Mona in the second hour and uh, continue to delve into some of this amazing material. Uh, condemnation without investigation is the height of ignorance. Uh, please buy me a birthday gift. No, I'm just joking. Uh, the love you deny is <laughs> All right, guys, if you're out there listening on one of the other uh, media formats, the iTunes, the Vimos, the YouTubes, of whoever, wherever this happens to land, uh, pop on over to www.the100thmonkeyradio.com and check out the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours of audio we have over there. And we'll see you in an hour or two. Namaste. Oh, yeah. Uh, almost, oh. I'm forgetting like everything today, Tom. Um, to, I recently, last week, I launched the um, my website for the authors page the, with all the. Well, the two what's the name? What's the name of the page? Um, it's www.ramonauthor.com. There we go, guys. Uh, go check out Ramon and his. Uh, There's a link actually right, stuff. right on the website. So. There you go. All right, we'll see you in an hour two. Damn, I got freedom. The lessons being taught, black man. I know you need one. The right time to make you free your mind. Right now, if you miss the then press the wine. It's the right time to make you free your mind. Right now, if you miss the then press the wine. It's the right time to make you free your mind. Right now, if you miss the then press the wine. It's the right time to make you free your mind. Right now, if you miss the then press the wine. It's the right time to make you free your mind. Right now, on high my am, you want the plan that has to be made. Shouldn't tell the daughters not to be creative. You see, the motive is to control more than this. Hitless, the helpless, and the soul. 
and I bring much more than your average MC. Please give me your break, man. Let me be me so I can be free to do as I please. See what I see. Be who I be. From the brain, even when I start to enter The beats I'm bending, the vibes I'm sending It's pleasure, never better Even though shit is a mess I never stress in touch with insight Therefore I'm blessed with the armor Tell your mama, but kill the drama Wake up! If you're missing, then press the one. It's the right time to make you free your mind. Wake up! If you're 